The decision to come out of football and to go on the tools seemed to be harder for people around me because they were saying, what are you doing? You're mad, you don't want to be doing this the rest of your life, you know, go play football. But I could understand that I was not wasting the talent, but they had no bearing on what life was like in football. My name is Dean Neal and I am a professional goalkeeper coach, stroke, traditional bricklayer. A bricklayer overall, is priority trade. I think it's the, it's the most hardest trade to learn out of them all. A lot of modern day bricklayers uh, want to pop them down as fast as they can. You know, I've noticed the, the uh, work quality isn't what it used to be. The knowledge isn't what it used to be. A traditional bricklayer is a, someone who uses traditional methods, um, works a lot on traditional builds, so a lot of skill required, a lot of research into what goes on to that build and basically how they built that build many years ago so it would be pointless using modern day techniques on a traditional build because it just wouldn't fit in wouldn't go right so a lot of heritage work um i, li I like to say a lot of artistic work i love laying bricks you know best job in the world you know all weather elements and when i lay that bricks so i put that capital gold on my old music and i just i'm away and my focus is different and i think that's why i stayed between the football and the brick work because I had my foot in the door where I loved the football buzz, but was also able to come away from it. Where when you're professional, you can't, you're in it full time. I started off in professional football. You know, I went through the academy system. Uh, I was a very sought after goalkeeper. You know, one of those who you knew as a child who was getting max, you know, uh, loads of uh, offers and stuff. You know, I'd done the apprenticeship at um, Cholton. Got on really well, you know, was, was flying. I played non-league football, uh, had a very successful career, represented many clubs around um, the conference area and the non -league, uh, lower non-league. Um, and it just went on from there. And then I just found I had, I had a niche for Brickland. I love Brickland as well. And by the time I was 22, listen, I'm not gonna lie, at 22, I was a very strong, powerful boy. I used to do boxing and stuff, you know. I was running jobs, I was foreman. You know, I worked for several really good contractors and um, I juggled the two. I started getting offered deals all around the countries and there was only like year contracts, which meant me relocating with um, my missus and family at the time. And um, it just wasn't for me. And then a strange thing happened. Um, off season, uh, my friend's dad was a bricklayer, Simon. And uh, he said, do you want a bit of work? I wasn't doing nothing. So I was always wanting to get a bit of work. So I went to work and do you know what? I went to work and the radio was on, the uh, brick layers were all working, tops off. And I was like, this is a different world. All week I've been mentally and physically preparing for the game, dealing with the trialists coming in, you know, and, and these brick layers just, they just look so at home, you know, relaxed. And, and that was it, that was my path, you know. And one of the brick layers was an ex-professional. And he said to me, his, his words, a bit cliche, he said, Build a good foundation, Dino, because football isn't forever. It's full of opinions, and you never know when your time is up. With that advice, I asked to go on the odd, and believe it or not, I walked away. Just walked away from football. You know, the club tried to uh, regain my contract. I didn't want buying out or anything like that, or paying off. I just walked away. And do you know what, to be honest with you, at then, that time, I was happier. So I went on the odd. And I, and I learnt the trail. And um, after two years, realising that I had something in football, I snuck back into semi-professional football, non-league football, and um, continued working during the day and playing overnight, which was a hard graft, but it, I loved it. You know, the atmosphere in semi-professional football was different because people were working, people were real. The decision to come out of football and to go on the tools it seemed to be harder for people around me because <laughs> they were saying, what are you doing? You're mad, you don't want to be doing this the rest of your life, you know, go play football. But I could understand that I was not wasting the talent, but they had no bearing on what life was like in football because they hadn't been there. They're happy to work all week and go watch a game on a Saturday. They don't know the pressures of the outside. So I was very grounded. Um, I come from Canning Town, you know what I mean? That's the best university in the world. Um, street life right there. And I was very, very grounded. And um, the decision for me was, I just thought I don't want to lay the rest of my career 
in someone's opinion. You can be one person's, nah, don't fancy him, and another person's sign him. So I don't think I was mentally strong at that, that age for that. Towards the end, um, the beginning of the last obsession in 2008, 2009, uh, football was flying. Um, I decided to get into a little bit of coaching. Um, fans approached me and asked me to coach their kids. So I said, bring it before training session and I'll do it and train after. And I really enjoyed it. Within six months, I was working at Arsenal. Um, plenty of offers from other Premier League clubs as well, working in the academies. So doing that, I decided to, I've never been one to work for someone. That comes from the brick land, that's self-employed, you know, I'm my own man. I didn't like the structure, some of the syllabus was dated. So I decided to go on my own. So then working away, typical, I think this is in every bricklayer's head, it's got to be right, you're a perfectionist, you have to be consistent. How can I improve what I'm doing? And the answer was to open an indoor facility. So we have training 365 days a year, not governed by what the weather's doing or what the, the groundsman says, you know, pain, in the, you know, when the groundsman says he can't, it's too much rain or you can't do your feet work there, you have to be over there. So I invested in the first indoor facility and we are down as the first indoor goalkeeping facility in Europe. And this facility has enabled me to put right where I went wrong. No one could offer the advice I was going through when I come out of professional football. You know, no one could offer that, you know. Now I can. I can tell them the ups and downs. I can make them aware of what's, what's going to come their way. You know, it's not going to be plain sailing. Now, what I've done is I've turned down multiple offers from professional clubs, first teams in the league football, because I simply just believe in what I'm doing. There's very few brick lads coming into the trade now. We've got a massive issue with it. And my concerns here are, a lot of young brick layers, I've noticed working on sites, have tried to modernise techniques. You know, some of the techniques they're modernising is not right. You know, the quality of work is slipping. Now, we're known for our quality of work English bricklayers around the world, you know, and my concerns are if the new generation coming through are not keeping that high spec, they're going to be in 10 years teaching the new apprentices, which therefore the quality is going to just filter down, you know. Um, there's a reason why traditional methods are used and have done for centuries. I'm hearing stories about using smaller trowels because of your wrists. You know, use a smaller trowel forget your wrist problem, but you're going to get hip and shoulder problems because you're twisting and turning even more, you know, it's just simple. So, um, you know, keep keep it real, big lads, you know, it's not always about the pan, no, have a bit about you, yeah. keep the quality and work there, you know, and um, keep the trade real.